And the Industrial Revolution was all about steam engines. And we have one here. It's very simple how it works. There's some water being heated by this furnace. Creates steam. Steam passes across, pushes against some pistons. If I open this valve, we can even see the wheel start to spin around. And a little whistle. So he was very interested by heat and motion. But to demonstrate what Count Rumford himself demonstrated about the relationship between heat and motion, I actually need one of my Christmas presents. Julia's bringing on now. Okay, it's not exactly the power drill that I'm waiting for, but it's the same principle. In fact, it's the same drill that Count Rumford used 200 years ago. The way it works is quite straightforward. There's a hand brace here. And if we turn this, it moves a spindle, which turns against the wood, and it creates friction. But I need a volunteer to help me. Would you like to come down? And... and your name is? Ben. Ben. So Ben, first job, protective goggles. So while Ben puts on his protective goggles, I'm just going to pour some ether into the top of this drill. Because it's this ether that's actually going to detect the heat. So Ben, are you feeling strong today? Mm -hmm. Right. We'll soon see. Ben, I want you to turn this handle Which way? clockwise. And keep turning. So what Ben's doing is turning the handle, handle's moving the spindle against the wood, creating friction. Oh! Thank you very much, Ben. So what Ben demonstrated, preceded 200 years ago by Count Rumford, was that motion and heat they're really just different forms of energy. Actually, we know this ourselves. We rub our hands together on a cold day. That steady motion creates heat. But what's this got to do with the direction of time? Well, that had to wait another 70 years until the first glimpses of that connection emerged. And it was thanks to this man, Ludwig Boltzmann. Now, Boltzmann was a very interesting man because what he wanted to do was he wanted to connect this large-scale world of heat and motion and steam engines to the microscopic world of atoms. And at that time, atoms had just been discovered, just thought that atoms lived in everything, from this brace and this steam engine to ourselves. We all contain atoms. Now what he realized, instead of trying to find some microscopic law of motion that would replace Newton's and would have a direction of time in it, he just stepped back and he decided to focus on how organized things were. And he realized that he could explain what we've seen here in terms of how organized things are. Well, let's think if he's right. When we move the brace, when Ben moved the brace around, this was a very organized motion. This brace contains lots of atoms, lots of molecules, and they're moving around in a very organized way. But then that gets converted into this random motion of the ether as all the molecules zip around and the bung just flew out the top. So something organized got converted 
into something disorganized. And what he reckoned was that that was at the root of the direction of time. But in order to understand this, I need all of your help. What we're going to do is we're going to pass out cards to a small section of the audience. And these cards have a picture on them. In fact, the way that we're handing them out, a pattern will emerge. And if you hold them up, that's it, keep the cards together, put the cards together. You can see a picture of a clock. It's actually Big Ben. It's actually saying three o'clock. Now we're going to try something that involves the rest of you. Because we're going to start some music. And while the music's playing, I want you to hand around these cards. You've got to hand them around randomly, very quickly. Just pass them on to your neighbour. If you've got to go across the aisles, do it. So let's get this going. Music, please. That's it, pass them around across the aisle. Quickly. That's it, if you've got a card, just get rid of it. Now, if you've got a card, hold it up. You're so good at disorganizing things. Look how easy this was. We just passed around these cards, and in no time at all... Oh, look, there's a card over there, there's a card up here. They're practically throughout the whole lecture theatre. And it was easy. Okay, we don't like easy things. So what I want you to do when the music starts now, you just remember who you got the card from <laughs> and just pass it back. And let's see how easy it is to get all those cards back in that section of the audience in the right order. Everybody ready? Music, please. That's it, keep them going this way. I think you need to keep them going this way. Oh, there's one stuck up here. Let's see if I can... Mm. Well, you did very well, very well. But what you saw was that it wasn't easy. And if you hold up the cards, let's hold up the... Well, I certainly wouldn't buy that clock. <laughs> it's very hard to organize things. But it's very easy to disorganize things. And that's what Boltzmann was telling us. That's the glimpse of the direction of time. Our notion of eggs breaking, of ourselves getting older, is to do with this flow from order to disorder. But Boltzmann didn't tell us that things can't go backwards. Let's have a look. Could I have another volunteer, please? Would you like to come down? And your name is? Jessica. 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 Let me just explain what you've got in front of you. 